Hi everyone, Scott and Marla Berger here with the Tree of Life Movement and the Tree of Life Intention Stick and 22 Days of Intention and just so grateful that Marla and I can come into your homes each day at 11, 11 and just talk about what's taking place in the world and I, I'm sorry Marla's not here physically with us right now, she's at home, I'm here at the office and uh, but she's here with us, so I just want you to to say, we want you to know, thank you for, again, the continued love and the inspiration and the messages and the stories you're sending us each and every day. It just, like I say, or Marla and I say, it fills us up to allow us to share these things with you. And, oh my goodness, again, you guys going on to our website, uh, treeoflifemovement.com or intentionstick.org and signing up for the pledge. It's just incredible to see what's taking place around the world. Uh, this, this global connection, again, this is about us collectively in a time that is so needed. And again, I know this is difficult to say sometimes or even for us to understand, but this is happening for us. As hard as this may seem, what's taking place around the world with this this virus, it's it's a gift because it's a allowing us to look from within, which is what Marl and I were talking about today, which is such a powerful intention. And today's intention that we chose is the intention of spiritual. And it's such, it's such a powerful word that, again, um, as you see what we do each day, we, we set our intention, we place it inside our intention stick, we seal it with love, and we wear it around our, our neck, that tool, that reminder that allows us to, to again, set our intention each day and, and allows us to get up and live that life of intention. And the reason we chose spiritual today is, is what this world needs right now is that spirituality. And I'm gonna actually share uh, a story about myself and um, and and the word spiritual and what that may mean not just for myself but for you and you know we in this world uh, this collective we've been as we say programmed to wake up have breakfast go to work go to to school go to uh, church uh, synagogue temple mosque whatever that may be for you and, and what I'm going to share with you is a little bit of my spiritual journey or a lot of my spiritual journey and, and, and where I am today. And, and I grew up in, in not a religious household uh, and, and, you know, went maybe for high holidays or different events randomly and then, uh, and then went off to school and, you know, I was raised... I was raised Jewish, but really uh, ultra reformed. I mean, other than like a bar mitzvah and high holidays, if that, that was basically our upbringing. And when I went off to school, there happened to be uh, on campus uh, 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 called Hillel. And I just saw or felt myself being drawn toward it. And, you know, again, your soul searching for something bigger than the world and, and I, 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 I it just it made me happy when I went and then you know after that I um, I met my wife Marla and and she grew up very religious uh, actually Orthodox but that was more forced upon her versus seeing the the beauty of the religion and, and what I saw on my journey was the beauty of the religion from really nothing other than maybe tradition to then seeing the beauty and then seeing more and getting more involved and becoming more 
religious and and prayers three times a day and going to synagogue pretty much every Saturday and all the high holidays and so forth. But I, after years and years of, of going, I, I, I felt empty and I felt almost robotic that I, I was, I, I, I was just going to, to services, but I, I was still feeling empty inside. And, and I shared that with my wife and, and it wasn't where I was at that time. It just, I, I, I needed something more. I needed something more to fill myself back up. And it wasn't from that because I tried going to another, maybe I thought it was another synagogue or another place to go do prayers. And, and again, I, I would get excited, but then I would feel empty or, or, or still not filled up. And I started, and again, when this started taking place, when I, I, I received, or Marla and I received the message of the tree of life, that image, that, that the blueprint of who we are, which is the evolution of consciousness. It's the expansion of our souls. And, and I just started to grow and, and learn and, and receive, or, or should I say be open to receive versus being programmed. And what I mean by that is, you know, I started on that journey of religion and it became to me more fear-based. Like if I didn't go or if I didn't follow these rules and regulations and show up and practice this and that, I, I almost felt guilty, but it was, it was controlling my life. It was also then not only affecting my wife and my children, it, it was, it was putting a, almost um, a negativity because my wife wanted more of the beauty of a religion versus to have it forced. And, and what I share by that is that I had it, I had to let go of those reins and, and see more of the spirituality to, to not worry about the external world is is what uh, what everyone in this world has been programmed to think that if I achieve more this more money a bigger house more cars whatever more, whatever that may be most of this world feels or thinks it's going to bring them their happiness it, or or fill them up and, and it's not it's the spirituality the, to 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 fill ourselves up is, is to be open to receive and what resonates with us, with our heart and soul, what makes us happy. It, 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 it's, I've, I've witnessed this where I've seen people go to say, oh, I'm religious, and they go to church or they go to temple or they go to synagogue or they go to mosque and they come home after a service and they kick the dog or God forbid they beat the child or the wife or whatever that may, or they're negative and they do that day in and day out. I'm, again, I'm just talking as an overview and that's not being a religious or a spiritual person. To be spiritual is, is to come home and, and, and be and, and be with your your family and to receive all the beautiful things that fill us up to make us a spiritual person the the expansion of our souls and i know you've heard marl and i talk about it's not being better than anyone else in this world it's being better than who we were yesterday we are here to grow each and every day so the spiritual journey for, for me and, and my story has been so beautiful and I'm, I'm so grateful to, to have trusted my, my soul, my intuition to, to know that by going, whether it is to synagogue or to church or to mosque or temple, doesn't make you a good person. You make yourself a good person. You know what is right and what resonates with you and, and and what we then learn and receive from us being spiritual is what we then share with the world you know many of the religious or spiritual workers around the world 
the the understanding whether we say God the universe the source the light whatever that is for you we have to see that within everyone right when we look at another that's that's being spiritual because we see that within us all we see God or the universe or the source or the light within each of us and that's spirituality and ah, that's what we're here to achieve and and you have to trust this your heart and soul it's never wrong versus trusting the external or what everyone else tries to program you to think you need to do trust you right I am that I am we're all made whether again we say God the universe the source the light we're all made in that image and we are perfect just who we are we have to trust that right we have to see that spirituality in us all it's there so um, thank you for <laughs> thank you for allowing me to share my story I don't know if it made sense I, I you know me I can go off in nine million directions I have ADOS which is attention deficit oh squirrel so it's sometimes I lose focus of where I'm going but um, thank you for allowing me to share this and as we do our, our daily meditation, our global meditation about us collectively, I would love for you to, to hold your phone, your, your computer monitor, and, and close your eyes. And just be present right now and be in the moment. And just right now, just taking that first deep breath together. So we can ground ourselves and be present and not, again, worry about what happened five minutes, five days, five months, five years behind us or what's happening five minutes or five days or five months ahead of us, but just to be present. And I want us all to take in three deep breaths. And when we do that, I want you to breathe in the word spiritual and what that means to you. And, and when we exhale, let go of anything that you're holding on to or that you're carrying or, or programming or whatever that may be. Let go of those reins. And we're going to do this together. So again, we're going to breathe in through our nose, through our diaphragms, and exhale through our mouths. And we're going to do this now. And keep your eyes closed as we do our meditation together. First and foremost, may you all receive blessings of health and blessings of courage and light and love and gratitude and spirituality and everything in you and you all need in your lives right now to fill up your beautiful hearts and souls with unconditional love, which will allow you to fully heal, which will allow you to continue to help so many more brothers and sisters heal, which will unify all mankind and bring us back together as one, so we should all see heaven on earth as it is here now. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you for you sending Marla and I your beautiful blessings and prayers. I'm feeling that we're receiving that. And, and again, this is about us collectively and, and why we're all here, why we are, are all given our, our gifts, our tools. It's, it's to touch another soul. It's about a soul to soul connection. Again, as you hear us speak now every day, it's allowing someone to feel that they're loved when they're not feeling loved, when they, they matter, when they don't feel like they matter, they have purpose, when they don't feel like they have purpose, and 
they are and you are just as important as anyone else in this world and as we say go outside and live life to the fullest right now and or open the windows and breathe in the air and and as I say or Marlon I say listen to the birds or the leaves or when you're going for a walk say hi to someone just have a, a connection and let that other person know they exist and ask how their day is or just say hi or again just smile and and go on to our, our website or, or Facebook or Instagram and please continue to send us your stories, send us a selfies. Thank you again for still during these times, people are, are purchasing and gifting others intention sticks to, we're shipping them out in the United States and around the world. So you can go onto our website and still do that. Again, treeoflifemovement.com, intentionstick.org. Uh, we're posting each and every day's 22 days of intention on our, our YouTube Tree of Life movement. So, um, wow. Uh, thank you again for allowing Marl and I to come into your homes each and every day to share 22 days of an intention. Thank you for allowing me to share my heart and soul today in talking about the word spiritual. And as always, Marl and I are sending you and your family blessings and intentions of gratitude, light, and love from our family, from our hearts and souls to you and yours. We love you. We love you. We love you.